I mean, this is definitely not the right street in New York to be talking about financial stuff. I, I, I could just drive another five minutes down to Wall Street, but it's like Sunday night and I'm tired and that's further from home. So we're staying here. We're in New York. It's, it's financy, right? Ish. Anyway, I'm sure most of you have heard that Silicon Valley Bank took a dump last week, AKA the bank failed, completely crashed its stock really bad. And I just heard a few hours ago that two additional banks have crashed. Silvergate Bank and Signature Bank. Now, originally I was just planning on talking about Silicon Valley Bank and by the time Monday rolls around, when you guys are seeing this video, <laughs> who knows, three more banks might have crashed because I'm filming this Sunday night. Uh, so originally I was just going to talk about the Silicon Valley Bank stuff. Now, what happened was, and keep in mind, by no means is this what actually happened. This is what they told us in the news, what we have been told. No, we don't know what's actually going on, you know, behind closed doors. So Silicon Valley Bank announces that they had to sell some securities and uh, also were going to sell additional shares of its stock because they weren't liquid enough. But before they announced that, the big people, the CEO, the major shareholders sold millions and millions of dollars worth of stock weeks before this announcement. And hours before the bank actually went down, a lot of employees got very, very large bonuses. So this announcement was planned and caused a bank run. And a bank run is when basically all of the bank's clients go to it and try to withdraw their money. So, you know, whether you bank at Chase or Citibank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, imagine that, you know, Bank of America stock is crashing and all that stuff and you run to the bank to take out your money. That's what happened with this bank, Silicon Valley Bank, which was known for like tech companies, startups, and 97% of them allegedly had over $250,000 deposited, which is apparently important because the FDIC only insures up to $250,000. So, I mean, that's a whole debacle and, you know, whether or not that's true it's hard to say but most people did not get their money on in time because silicon valley bank was not liquid you know banks don't just hold all of your money they invest it and try to make money back based on their their usual active operating kind of value so the bank knows how much money it needs to have in it in order to satisfy all of the clients needs so you know, if there's $200 billion in the bank and they only need 10 billion liquid, they're not gonna keep 200 billion. They're gonna invest 190 billion into other stuff. However, all the clients saw this and freaked out and were advised to withdraw their money. Silicon Valley Bank didn't have the money. That caused the stock to dump like 80% and it actually got shut down by the federal government and they actually took over Silicon Valley Bank. Now, someone was supposed to buy the bank. They were trying to sell it last week, but no one took the offer. And Silicon Valley Bank said that they have their money in government bonds. And that means that they supposedly bought bonds a few years ago with a pretty low interest rate, and they're supposed to get their money back in a few years. However, they didn't have the money now to pay back their clients. Now. Uh, who believes that, you know? To me, that was the biggest lie in this whole thing. What's the likelihood that Silicon Valley Bank actually had government bonds and no one was willing to buy them out? I, I don't think they're telling the truth. I think that Silicon Valley Bank, big tech stuff, big crypto stuff, I think they had some volatile assets and they're not telling the truth. You know, could they have been invested in crypto? And that's getting to the bigger picture of what I think this is about because the crypto market seems to be steady now. Bitcoin hasn't dumped in a while. Nothing has dumped in a while besides the FTX debacle. I think that no one's buying crypto. And I've, I've said it for like years now. I think crypto is a pyramid scheme. So I think it's been long enough that no one has been buying crypto and all of these big banks are invested in crypto that they have to dump them and lie about it. So I, I think a crypto crash, if I had to bet, is coming somewhat soon. And any bet, I mean, Signature Bank and Silvergate Bank, the other two banks that just dumped, 
were heavily affiliated with crypto lending. So that reinforces what I thought about Silicon Valley Bank. I don't think they had government bonds. That's what they told people. There's no proof of it. And there's multiple news articles stating that Silicon Valley Bank had government bonds, but that doesn't seem to be the truth because I would assume that another bank would have bought them if that was the truth. Even if they took a five or 10% loss, they could have still covered all of their clients' deposits. So look, look, I mean, this is, this is just my hypothesis, but the stories don't add up. And we know based on the past that there's a lot of greedy people that like stealing other people's money. So someone is getting screwed over and someone's taking their money. That's it. The, the, the simple point of what's going on here is someone is stealing someone else's money. Now, whether that's you know the elite of the elite stealing money from lower level elite, whether that's the elite stealing money from small businesses or startups or clients, point is a lot of money is getting stolen and the people at the top are trying to alleviate their damages. As we said earlier, the CEO cashed out millions of dollars of stock beforehand. All of these other crypto related banks are going down. So I think the truth is gonna come out about the crypto Ponzi scheme sooner or later. You know, with the economy being really, really bad and no one investing, no one spending money, um, you know, Bitcoin and all those cryptocurrencies rely on pump and dump. It's similar to the stock market, but it's a lot more volatile and reactionary and not as assured. So I, I think what it really is, is um, over the past year and a half year, uh, crypto hasn't been able to pump and dump anymore. And, and these elite people, these society members that are still holding crypto, they can't even cash out. That's the big problem. No one's buying crypto at the current price and they don't want to dump it. They have too much money in the game and they, they, can't, they can't even cash out. I bet some of them can't even break even. So what they're doing is they're trying to hold on to their money and their investments in crypto and wait and hope that people are gonna reinvest. But now that people aren't reinvesting, they have to cause these crazy crashes. So, so whether it's about crypto or Bitcoin or whatever, whether I'm right or wrong, something fishy is going on. And uh, you know, people also said that Jim Cramer, um, I, I think he's on NBC, he talks about stocks. And people always joke like, do the opposite of what he says. About a month ago, he actually suggested people buy Silicon Valley Bank stock. So with his platform, you're assuming that people invested millions and millions of dollars into Silicon Valley Bank stock so that the crooks that control NBC could cash out their own money. I mean, the bigger picture, which I'm sure you guys know, is you know there's a, a small group of people that control most of the wealth of the masses. And this is just another scheme that goes along with what they've been doing for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It's just something that people are unfamiliar with. So my advice to you, if you want to get really rich, you marry a nice, short, handsome Italian guy. You have a beautiful daughter, right? Beautiful daughter. And you get your beautiful daughter to sleep with the CEOs of these companies. And you find out when these ugly fucking cocksuckers are going to cash out. That's how you get fucking rich. Unless it's just blind luck, which doesn't really happen. It's all, it's all insider trading. It's all nonsense, guys. They're not telling us the truth about what's really going on. And I thought I had a, a reasonable hypothesis and grasp of, of how this was going to blow up just based on the Silicon Valley Bank stuff. But ever since finding out the other two banks crashed as well, who knows? People are saying that, you know, Silicon Valley Bank is going... Oh, the biggest thing I haven't talked about yet is how many people lost their money. There, there was hundreds of billions of dollars in Silicon Valley Bank that these companies cannot get or recuperate. And the FDIC only covers 250K. So now what's gonna happen? If I was one of these companies, I would immediately, I mean, th they would have to file a federal lawsuit on Monday and get an injunction on Tuesday to see the books of Silicon Valley Bank and find out what the fuck is actually going on. That's what I would do. I would find out if Silicon Valley Bank actually has treasury bonds or whatever bonds they said they bought. And then, okay, then, then that would be a little more comforting because you would know that the government can step in and sell those and people will eventually get their money back. But I, I guess that's the, that's the big if, you know, why, would they lie about having bonds? 
why didn't they post proof of it? I don't know. I don't really know. I just figured I would talk about this and give you guys my perspective. I could be right. I could be wrong either way. Um, you know, I'm not working on Wall Street. And I don't like stealing people's money. So thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed a little change of scenery. Uh, you guys can go to frank stefanocom if you'd like to support me through my businesses that are actually legitimate, that provide value. But outside of that, guys, please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon.